Chapter 11 is the beginning of Unit 3. Unit 3 covers chapters 11, 12, and 13. Chapter 11 is about randomness and random events. An event is random if we know the outcomes that could happen, but we cannot predict what outcome did or will happen. For example, flipping a coin. You know you're going to get a head or you're going to get a tail, but you cannot predict what's going to happen, so that's a random event. If you uh, play the lottery, you know what numbers could possibly be drawn in that lottery, but you cannot predict which numbers will be drawn, therefore that's a random event. And then shuffling a deck of cards, you know what cards could be drawn after you shuffle, but you can't predict which card will, will be drawn, so this is a random event. Now, um, shuffling is kind of an exception because it can be influenced by your shuffling technique, so it's not completely truly random, but it's um, considered random enough. Random does not mean evenly dispersed. There's a difference. Simulations. A simulation is when we model random events using a random number generator. We're trying to use our calculators, random number generator, to simulate what's really going on in the real world situation. Here's our first simulation. We're simulating a coin toss. We're using the random number generator with the numbers one representing a head and two representing a tail. And we want to figure out how many flips it's necessary to get five heads. So we're going to set up a random integer between 1 and 2, random integers in math, and it's under num, and it's, uh, no, it's under probability, excuse me, math, probability, and it's number 5, random int. And you want to do 1, comma 2, that means generate a number between 1 and 2. Now, if you generate a 1, that means you generated a head, and if you generate a 2, that means you generate a tail. So you want to keep generating numbers until you get 5 heads, and then stop and see how many flips did it take to get 5 heads. should be somewhere around 10 flips. might be 8, or might be 12, or 13, but it should be somewhere around 10 flips to get 5 heads. Run 10 to 20 trials, and then average together. Your average should be somewhere around 10 flips necessary to get 5 heads. Here's another simulation. We're trying to collect all six prizes from our boxes of favorite cereal. We're going to simulate this using the numbers one to six to represent each of the six prizes. Number one will be like getting the first prize. Number two will represent like getting the second prize and so on. We're going to keep generating numbers until we get all six prizes and then see how many boxes did we have to buy in order to make that happen. So to set this up, use uh, random int one comma six and then keep generating numbers until you get all six prizes and count up how many boxes of cereal you bought. Now you're going to run 10 to 20 trials of this and then average together. Your average number of boxes should be anywhere from like 13, 14, 15, or 16 boxes of cereal and average necessary to get all six prizes. In the World Series we play a series of seven games um, often one team is favored a little bit more than the other one. In this World Series, the one team is favored with a 55% chance of winning over the other team that's favored with a 45% chance of winning. When you're looking at skill level or favoring of one team over another one, you want to use the numbers 1 to 100 in your simulation. Here, since we have a 55% chance for the one team, we're going to use numbers 1 through 55 to represent that team winning a given game and then numbers 56 through 100 would be representing the other team or the weaker team winning a game. Now the World Series is a seven game series so you're going to generate seven numbers. In your calculator set up your random integer 1 comma 7 to generate, excuse me, 1 comma 100 to generate numbers 1 through 100 and then put a comma 7 after it to generate seven numbers for the whole series. Now if the stronger team wins four or more games, then they win the uh, World Series for that trial. If the weaker team wins four or more games, then they win the World Series for that trial. So if you have four or more numbers that are from 1 to 55, the stronger team is winning. And if you have four or more numbers that are 56 to 100, then the weaker team is winning. So you want to run a trial and see who won the World Series. Did the stronger team win or did the weaker team win? Now we're going to run 10 to 20 trials of this and see what's the likelihood of the underdog, which is the weaker team, winning? So how many times out of all of our trials is the underdog winning? Should be somewhere, um, you know, around a 40, 30, 40 percent chance. Maybe even as high as 50 percent, but I doubt it. Maybe even as low as 20 percent. 
Okay, here's some bad simulations, things that are set up incorrectly. We're rolling a die 10 times. We want to see how many sixes we get in those 10 rolls. So we use number 0 to 10 to represent how many sixes we get. That's not correct. To set up the simulation correctly, you want to generate numbers 1 to 6, 1 comma 6, and then comma 10 to generate 10 numbers. Count up how many sixes you got, and how many sixes you got out of the 10 numbers would, be, would represent your outcome for that trial. So 1 comma 6 comma 10 would be how you'd set that up. Here's another simulation that's set up incorrectly. We are simulating shooting foul shots at basketball practice. We're going to use number 1 to represent making it and number 2 to represent missing it. They're simulating 1 comma 2 in this um, simulation. That's bad because most people have a certain amount of skill. They're not shooting 50-50. Let's say your skill level is 70% or 80% accuracy. Then you'd want to use numbers 1 to 100 to represent the simulation where your 1 to whatever your percentage of accuracy represents making it, and then the rest of the numbers to 100 represent your percentage of missing it. Things to remember, run enough trials. Don't just run a couple trials and stop. We're going to run 10 trials as a standard, just, um, you know, because that's what we're doing in... Uh, AP statistics. However, in reality, in real life, you want to run lots and lots and lots of trials in your simulation. Simulations only suggest what might happen. They don't um, say for sure that this is going to happen. It's just a uh, suggestion.